Tell us the significance of this new information uh, about this new call with Sondland directly to the president. We did not expect new information today. Uh, and this one material to the broader investigation, how significant? Well, it's very significant. And it, once again, it gives us a picture of the president of the United States uh, attempting to bribe uh, the head of a uh, foreign government uh, for the purpose of undermining our own free elections in the United States and to going to these extraordinary lengths, if indeed this testimony turns out to be accurate and confirmed by uh, Sondland, uh, it's very, very damning in terms of the President of the United States, and it's also consistent with what we have known all along, that the President of the United mm -hmm. States is not concerned that his policies are undermining the United States and to the advantage of Putin in Russia. And that's the undercurrent of all of what we heard today that is so extraordinary. And once again, we have to ask ourselves, and I know that Republican senators, who of course are expected uh, to acquit the president uh, in a trial in the Senate, but nonetheless, Republican senators are very concerned about why is it that the President of the United States continues over and over and over to serve the interests of Russia and Putin. And here today we have seen it in one bit of testimony after another. Here is Ukraine, this bulwark that has had part of its heart uh, overcome by, in the Crimea, by Russian tanks, by Russian forces. And this President of the United States uh, is, is perfectly content uh, to see this happen and concern himself instead uh, with what looks very much like his own directed conspiracy to undermine free elections in his own country with the aid of this foreign power. Sam, you were watching and live tweeting about all of this today and I, I was following some of what you were saying tonight and you mention what I had forgotten until now, which is that in Sondland's revised testimony that his lawyer gave to the committees, those three pages, he brings up the possibility of a second phone call with the president. He is set to testify publicly on Wednesday in a week. How much more critical does his testimony now become? Well, Sondland did leave himself some wiggle room. When he had refreshed memory, he left open the possibility of more than one call with President Trump. So that's something that we heard about directly today. But something that struck me, Poppy, is Ambassador Sondland is a goldmine for foreign intelligence services. The fact that he was speaking with the President of the, of the yes. United States about something as important as Ukraine and quote unquote investigations in the middle of a restaurant in a situation where others could hear really just makes foreign intelligence services jobs that much easier. And President Trump is aware of security protocols. He was speaking with someone, let's hope not on his personal cell phone um, in this way. But as Carl was just saying, let's just take a step back and talk about the import of Sondland telling a staffer that President Trump cared more about investigations than he did about Ukraine. That's really saying that President Trump is putting his own personal interests against the vital interests yeah. of the United States. He's helping Russia's interests mm -hmm. by um, really showing Ukraine that support for Ukraine is not a sure bet anymore. These witnesses both testified that just the notion, the public notion that security assistance was, going, was being considered as being withheld would help Russia. That's point number one. Point number two, and a little bit separately, we did hear today that President Trump solicited Ukrainian election interference in at least two ways. One, he asked for help investigating uh, his rivals uh, as part of these investigations that Sondland referenced. And two, he asked Ukrainians to make a public statement about um, these investigations, which is really information warfare mm -hmm. against America's, Americans for, for political gain. So this second phone call, perhaps there are others, is directly important for all of those reasons. And because Solomon will be mm -hmm. a direct witness, a firsthand witness, the, the Republicans first. can't claim that this is just hearsay. Yeah. Uh, Alana Plot, perhaps in preparation for how important that testimony will be, uh, the president is changing his tune. Uh, in, in very marked terms on Sondland. Uh, ha have a listen to that, and, and just I want you to assess the credibility of this. Uh, just have a listen to the tape here for a moment. The text message that I saw from Ambassador Sondland, who's highly respected, was 
There's no quid pro quo. He said that. Let me just tell you, I, I hardly know the gentleman. Yeah, so, so when text messages early on in the investigation, Sondland communicated there was no quid pro quo. Now he's changed his testimony. He's going to be speaking in public next Wednesday. All of a sudden, he, he's another coffee boy to the president. <laughs> Right. It's not at all surprising, Jim. I mm -hmm. think that Trump is preemptively and attempting to create distance between himself and Sondland because with Sondland's testimony, we really do have the first instance within this uh, debacle, if you want to call it that so far, where firsthand information will be on full display. Of course, the White House so far has done everything in its power to make sure that that hasn't happened um, throughout the course of uh, House Democrats' investigation. But where I think Sondland's testimony could be be particularly damning to Trump is that Republicans so far have relied on the argument that all of this is too esoteric for the American public to fully grasp and understand. But if Sondland can say um, and can confirm what Bill Taylor heard from his aide, that Trump feels far more interested in Biden, in Joe Biden and the investigations, as opposed mm -hmm. to American interest in Ukraine, geopolitics more broadly, that is a way in which I think the American people could be able to see how the alleged quid pro quo affected American interest in real time. It is right. no longer but hypothetical. And that sort of concreteness, I think, could really elevate the Democratic argument against this president.